big beard. Hey, Kayla. Hi, Ayana. <laughs> Welcome to Fill in the Blank Podcast. Welcome. Um, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week here at Fill in the Blank Podcast. Fill in the Blank. So, as you can see, <laughs> if you're watching, Ayana and I are in the same clothes because we had to double it up. Ayana's birthday is coming up. <gasps> Will this episode be out after? No, I think before. Right before your birthday? Right before my birthday. Yeah, so we're doubling up because Ayana is going on a little vacay. Whoop, whoop. Where are you going? Oh, everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to New Orleans, then from New Orleans straight to LA, then from LA straight to New York, and oh then back gosh. here. She's going to be on a world tour. All within a week span. That's crazy. Crazy, You're right? going to be on a world tour. I am on a world tour. Yeah. So that's why we're doubling up on the episodes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we already done talked about how we felt and stuff. I mean, <laughs> ain't really much more to share about that. Just being real. I mean, we're going to be real here. Mm-hmm. We already talked about that. So- no filler, no filling forecast. Well, <laughs> oh, oh, I was about we, to say fill of the week. I like how we forget our own, the, the name of our own segments. It's so funny. No fillings forecast. We just going to jump straight into it. All right, into it. Because we are doing a listener submission episode. Yay, it's Yay. about time. I know, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. I feel like we've kind of dwindled down on some of the... Because of all the guest episodes and yeah. like all the other stuff going on. I get it, but y'all but don't I do, forget. Don't I want to start prioritizing these like once a month. Yes, because I know people literally go on there and pour their hearts out and then I we know. might not respond. So I don't want it to be like that. Agreed. So we have our lovely producers back here about to send us some. So this is going to be in real time. First reactions to these submissions. That we may or may not have seen yet. So. All right. You ready? Yes. Okay. I'm about to read. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just. I need to see. I'm a visual learner. Okay. (laughs) Hi, ladies. I want to first say I love all of you. We love you. We love you too. Backstory. My fiance and I have been together for almost six years. Five of which being long distance. Ooh. We are in love with each other. Why I say it like that? Love. We are in love with each other. (laughs) They are my best friend and other half. They Okay. That might be the... Oh, maybe the pronoun. pronoun. Okay. Uh, We both have codependence characteristics. Ooh. So it's hard for us to be apart from each other for a long period of time, but I'm starting to break out of those codependency habits and starting to get to know myself more and enjoy time to myself, but my partner is still having a hard time being without me, which puts them in a bad mood when it happens, Mm -hmm. especially unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. My mom recently had gotten sick, which made me have to travel out of town to see her and take care of her one week out of each month. Oh, that's tough. It's gotten to the point where it's a problem for me to handle my personal business elsewhere because my partner has such a hard time uh, being Being without me. me. Mm -hmm. And their mood often... What? Oh, and their mood oftentimes affects mine and vice versa. My question is, is this considered deep codependency? If so, what are some ways to break out of that while still keeping a strong connection? Mm. This, uh, I mm, I won't say it's codependency. I don't know that yet. Mm-hmm. But I will say it does sound like her fiance struggles with just change. Mm-hmm. Adaptability. Adaptability, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's codependency. You think so? Yeah, just because... Um, if you're having that much of a hard time being without that person and it's impacting your mood and then ultimately impacting your relationship, mm. I feel like it definitely gives some codependency. codependency. I see what you mean. Yeah. That is, that is probably the element yeah. that makes it that. I think though, so the question is, is this considered deep codependency? I would say so. My opinion is yes. <laughs> um, if so, what are some ways to break out of that? While still keeping a strong connection, um, that's the part keeping a strong connection. I think in in because it sounds like her going to take care of her mom is a, it has to happen. Yeah. So this is something that both of you guys will just have to adjust to, and he has to understand that. Um, you should communicate to, that to him. Like this is something that I have to prioritize right now, but that doesn't mean that you're on the back burner. Mm-hmm. So what they should be doing in their spare time is making sure they maintain that connection. Yeah. Um, so maintain time together and mm-hmm. and not just like 
with each other, but like experiencing things together, whether that's like unpacking things, like um, uh, emotional things with each other, discussing things, or like just literally like connecting, maybe buy a game. I know uh, Let's Get Deep is always good. Yes. Uh, buy Let's Get Deep or, or We're Not, We're really, not really Strangers. Strangers. They have a couples edition. Yeah. And just and just uh, really connect. Yeah. I think also the first thing that came to my mind, and this is me being just like a type of person that's realistic about things that knowing that there are like certain things that might impact your relationship and it happen. might cause a little bit of a rift. It's going to happen. Yeah. If you all have the intention of knowing that you want to, you're on the same page that you want to keep your connection, you have to like address this head on to know that like, okay, this is impacting our relationship and our communication, our connection. Like we want to be open about it so that we can work together to combat the problems. Like yeah. knowing that it's not you versus him or them, because you did say them, it's not you versus them, but it is you all versus the issue. Yeah. So like what Ayana was sharing about these different methods that you can utilize in order to keep your connection strong and being able to be accepting that this is just the form that you all have to use yeah. during this time period. It doesn't mean that it's going to always be that way, but that's the way that you all have to create intimacy in your connection right now, since it is a priority that you care for your mom yeah. and that will impact how often you're able to see them. Also, I mean, honestly, like I can understand why the partner may be feeling some type of way, which is fine. Like those feelings are natural. Give your partner the space to feel those, but don't take them on for yourself. Right. Don't take them personally. Mm -hmm. um, just, just allow them the space to feel, talk about it if they want to talk about it mm -hmm. and, and then just keep it trucking. Yeah. But I think that the, the path of getting over codependency traits yeah. and characteristics is an individual path yeah um, I agree. it's I agree. not really something that you can't do it you can them. do yeah to make this person be less codependent yeah. so i think that it's important to even open up the conversation about that and seeing if your partner is willing to go on the journey to heal from those codependency Agreed habits that are showing up Agreed. in the relationship because it is a partnership it's yep. a part so your your partner's ability or willingness to even take on that journey or confront that mm -hmm. um will affect her yeah period yeah so yeah girl best talk, of talk yeah it out. best of luck um wishing you well on this journey but i think that if you and your partner are both aligned and that you want the relationship to work that you all will be able to work together against the problem and yeah. not against one another. Because it sounds like, I mean, this doesn't sound like a severe issue. No. I mean, it sounds like something that can be easily worked through. Mm -hmm. It just sounds like a transition. Mm -hmm. And transitions are hard for they individuals hard. and for couples. So. Yep. But these are the types of problems I always say that, that can you help you grow. Yes. You want to have these kind of problems as a couple. It yeah. shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be someone's character. And, and, no. Yeah. And it shouldn't be problems that you all are creating yourself. It should just be outside yeah. things that are going on. That's like, okay, this is triggering yeah. us in a way, but it's it's meant to help us This be is better. a good issue to have. Yes. This is something that can 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 legit help you, strengthen you. It feels negative, but it can be positive. Agreed. Depending Agreed. on how you frame depending it. Depending on how you frame it. Yes. Come on, growth mindset. Okay, we have another one. Mm -hmm. This one is short and sweet. Okay. It says, my husband is jealous of my success and it's draining me. How can I stay here? <laughs> she said, help How me. do I stay here? Help I am about to leave this, this man. Help me with this ass man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not tons of context. Yeah, um, your husband is jealous of your success. I think that um, this is something that a lot of people can maybe relate to because I think that this is an innate thing mm -hmm. that men are typically the providers Men are typically the ones in relationships that would be deemed the successful one. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's important to address this issue with um, with care yeah. and tact because you don't want to emasculate him. Yeah. However, he is portraying probably some toxic masculinity because he does not know how to communicate that he wants his own success and he doesn't want to feel less than in comparison to yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's hard. That's an individual journey too. It is. He should he should probably find something that he's ridiculously competent in or something that he can learn to be ridiculously competent in that's outside of his career. Mm-hmm. That'll fulfill him. Yeah. And I think that it's a personal journey that he has to go on. Mm-hmm. And also knowing that in relationships in general, there are going to be highs and lows where one partner might be up mm-hmm. and the other one is down. Yeah. I think that you have to communicate to him that your success is his success. Yeah. Because this is your husband. So it's not like y'all are just dating. This is your husband. Mm-hmm. So when you all shared vows and you created a, a unity, mm-hmm. um, you decided that you all are one mm-hmm. and that what it is that he goes through, what you go through, what he wins, what you win, it's all both it's of all, yours. It's a, it's a household. It's a household win. Yep. So you have to remind him of that. And I think that sometimes people naturally get caught up in the human experience of mm. like, crap, like I don't feel good about myself. Like mm. I'm not where I want to be, but it's like, you know, you just have to remind him, even though it's difficult like you all are doing this together. Yeah. And then helping him to even maybe discover what it is what the it success is he, yeah. right, will look like but for d- him. But d- 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 don't, don't be pushy about it. Mm-mm. Like be supportive, but not controlling. Ooh, Caring. Don't be controlling about it. If you mm-hmm. if you have to ask more than once if he needs help yep. and he says no, then it's control. Yep. Word if you Asia. ask once <laughs> and he says no, then just leave it be. It's funny. Because but then keep checking in. This kind of came up before with Marcus and I. Mm-hmm. Um and we had to have a conversation about it because he did. Uh, I remember when things were going like extremely well with the podcast and it was kind of taking off. Mm-hmm. And I had grad school podcast, like everything was just kind of like moving in a positive direction in terms of what I was like passionate about doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that Marcus was in a place of feeling like he was just kind of like existing in mm-hmm. his in his work. And it kind of made him... Um, I think feel some kind of way. Like yeah. he didn't know how to express it. He thought that I would take offense to it. Cause it's and, triggering. Yeah, yeah. And, but the thing was, I wasn't offended because I can understand because I was there before with him where I was in a low point and he was winning, winning, winning. And I was just like What's going sitting on there. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have things happening positively in my life. And I had to remind him of this thing that like you like, when when I win, you win. When yeah. you win, I win. Mm-hmm. And it's a difficult concept to go by because we're all like raised to be like individuals and you're not sharing success and you, jo- conjoining with somebody else that like this is our win together, you right. know? So I get it's a hard thing. It reminds me almost of just like being, because I've always said that I want to be in a relationship where that's my best friend. Mm-hmm. So it just reminds me of just like, I just want what's best for my best friend. Yeah. So if my best friends went in, like, go best friend. Yep. <laughs> yep. Go best friend, go. Hello? But if my best friend isn't winning, it's like, okay, well, do you need support? Like, what's up? You what need can help? we do? What can we do? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, girl, don't lead a man. Don't I leave mean, him, girl. this is marriage, boo. You don't, in it. Right. Don't leave him, boo. <laughs> just, you know, be supportive. Hopefully he ain't being nasty now. Mm-hmm. Don't um, look. We ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for that. Check. Me but just try to <laughs> try to meet him. It can be extremely difficult. Like this is something that's extremely difficult for men. I know. Yeah. Because they are hardwired to be the successful ones, be the providers. And if you're experiencing that and he isn't, it is probably like chipping at his character. So just be mindful of that yeah. and try to take care of yourself in the process as well and figure out what it is that you would need for him so that from him. So it doesn't like impact you so heavily. Agreed. I think y'all just need to have an open conversation. Agreed. Agreed. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was beautiful. Next. Is that all we got? That's the No, there's oh. more. There's more. We're just waiting. But wait. There's more. <laughs> there's more. We got it. Oh, we did. Go ahead. You want me to read it? Yeah, sorry. Okay. (laughs) Hi, guys. Love your podcast and so proud of y'all. Thank you. We love you as well. Um, So I feel like I'm in a similar situation that Ayana mentioned in the episode on the interdependent woman about not communicating and having someone practically pleading with you to communicate, but it's like you just have nothing to say, Mm -hmm. except it's with my friend slash roommate. I struggle with communicating how I'm feeling or thinking a lot of times because I don't want to say anything they'll rock the boat in my friendship or start a fight or just be in opposition of what my friend is thinking or saying. 
And when I do finally communicate, it seems like it's already too late and caused the problem that I didn't want in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that this problem of mine will ruin my friendship if it hasn't already. What would you recommend that I do to show that I do care about this friendship while also not letting my fear of getting uncomfortable get in the way? The fact that she wants to communicate, she should show that and that would show the friend that she cares. Mm -hmm. Um, Investment of any form of uncomfortability and vulnerability will show that she cares. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing about learning how to communicate, and this was this was what was so hard for me, is you have to always, <laughs> it reminds me when I was a teenager and I wanted to ask my cousin something that I knew she might say no about mm-hmm. or he might reject, but I had to muster up the strength to just go and ask. Yeah. Um, and you kind of just got to do that. You have to tap into that like teenage part of you where like, I just got to ask for, you know, I just got to ask or I just got to talk about it um, and always start off with um, something, some positive thing of like, mm-hmm. or some form of connection in my romantic relationships. If I have a conflict, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll initiate some form of physical contact first. So either I'll hold their hand, I'll like somehow be touching them to let them know, like we're connected. Mm-hmm. This isn't an argument. Mm-hmm. We're simply having a conversation, but yeah. people who typically struggle with communication, it always just feels like an argument because yep. it's conflict, yep. but conflict can be very, very healthy. Yes. If you guys learn to see it like the issue as the issue, not Mm -hmm. like an attack on characters for both people. Yeah. Um, I was like, when you were saying that, that just made me think about like literally resolution is on the other side of conflict. Agreed. So if this is somebody that you value and you feel like this, this friendship is important to you, you have to kind of determine like what's more important for you to like hide your feelings Mm -hmm. and in order to keep in a safe zone of the of the friendship Mm -hmm. or if you truly want to continue to grow with this friend and when you're trying to grow with someone you have to have conflict sometime in order to get over that hump like you don't want to water yourself down and put yourself Mm -hmm. um, make yourself small in a friendship because that's not healthy for you and that's not a real friendship it's not yeah. And I know it's difficult because I'm kind of like that too. I don't really like to rock the boat and I don't want to be in conflict with my friends, but I've grown over the years to realize that like that is just literally a part of relationship. Yeah. Like it's it happen. is unhealthy if you have zero conflict. Like you're mm-hmm. supposed to have moments that you all might not seem see eye to eye because you're different people and mm-hmm. you have different thoughts, but then you find a way to meet in the middle and that grows your bond. That always grows a bond. Yeah. And I think I think that's when I realized like I was more comfortable with um communication is when I start to see the pattern of like, okay, we got through this. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got through this. Oh, I survived this with this person. And it always strengthens you if you guys are both on the same page of like truly truly being vulnerable and communicating with each other yep um i mean if she's hard if you struggle with um initiating the conversation i always start off with because there's always something that i did or said that was wrong and i always say like okay i wish i would have Mm -hmm. and and i that's how i started off and then i state my intention Mm -hmm. and then we just start the conversation yeah um if you if you don't know if you're going to get defensive or not because i know sometimes when people get defensive they lose track of what they actually meant Mm -hmm. write it down first yeah Write it down first. It's always easier to write down and to proofread your your stuff. So if you need to write a letter to her and then go to her and read it out loud, mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. And that'll really start. And that'll show just how vulnerable you are because mm-hmm. she'll recognize like, oh, you, you really took the time to write down your feelings and your, your you know, what you want for this friendship. Yeah. And she'll appreciate that. Yeah. You really just want to like, even in friendships, people emphasize this with like romantic relationships, but even with your friendships, you want to make sure that you're compatible with your friends yeah. and that these are, this is a friendship that is, um, that you're really connected to Aligned and it's, with, yeah. yeah, and it's helpful. So I think that, um, if this friend knows you and knows your heart, they'll know the place that you're coming from by addressing something that needs to be addressed. Like I it's agree. not a negative thing. I agree. Yeah. Ooh, but that's always hard, man. Conflict is. is hard. Learning how to do conflict resolution is very difficult. We was just talking about this earlier too. Yeah. Cause I was, I was just sharing with them about me doing that with one of a friend of mine that like, sometimes I put up a, not sometimes, most of the time <laughs> I put up a wall of like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't care. I act like I don't care because it's easier yeah. to do that than yeah. to sit with the to sit with the issue and I've been I think I've been going through that phase right now where I'm reflecting because you know you go through phases where you lose friendships and then you actually reflect like 
was I meant to lose that friendship? Yeah, like, like or did I let that, that friendship go? Yeah. Did I did I drop the ball on it? And so I've been in that reflective state because I, there are, and you know what it is? Mm. I think it's um I was talking to Chloe and Joe about this, that it's I think about when you are about to get married, you kind of start to have an identity crisis. Yeah. It, because you start to think about who you are yeah. and who you're going to be yeah. and what you leave behind and what you take with you. And so you start to really sit with yourself and think about uh, connections that you've had and are, are these connections that you want to like keep? Like, do you feel like this person is? And I think it's because you're thinking of, about like your bridesmaids. Yes. And like, who yeah. you're inviting to your wedding and Bro, who's going to yes. be there. So I've been Bro, really going through yes. a whole identity crisis about it. Shit. Yeah. Really, and mine, I had to process it so damn fast because I didn't have time. You literally didn't. I didn't have time. I can't imagine that. But I remember, I remember pausing and realizing like, because I, I used to say, I don't care like that I don't have that many friends. I only have two, so what? Mm -hmm. But I remember at my wedding thinking like, this can't be my only village. Like mm -hmm. I, there there needs to be more. Like this isn't enough support. I, and don't get me wrong. I, I love my people. Yes. Like they were, those are my aces, mm -hmm. man. Anna and Brie are the real ones. So yes. Um, but I realized like I want more friends. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need more friends. Yeah. Um, and there's different parts of you like. Yeah, yeah. Oh certain God, friendships yes. really speak to. And yes. so it's kind of nice to have like a, a full community. And I've realized that even when I look at like my bridesmaids, how like everybody speaks to these different parts of who I am. Yeah. And it's very representative of who I am as a person. So, yeah, yeah it gives you a, a whole identity crisis. Uh oh. Oh, that coffee doing something. Uh oh. <laughs> I feel it's like, hidden. Oh we got to move. We got to move. Ow. Okay. We got another one. Okay. Okay. This is the, probably the last one. And then we could maybe go into talking about some feels of the week if we got any, but. Okay. Okay. After years. Of, oh, you need to read it. Oh, what? Thing? Okay. Cause I read the last two. Oh. So it's your turn. <laughs> Kayla's like, you do it. <laughs> um, Okay, after years of going on countless dates and getting to know guys, but soon the relationships ended within four months. Typical. That's mm -hmm. actually, that's pretty typical. Yes. Um, looking at my past is repulsive. Oh. oh. And I'm tired of giving myself self away to men to soon who, oh, too soon who didn't deserve me. Mm -hmm. I've recently decided to practice abstinence from sex and maybe even celibacy. Mm -hmm. It's been two months without sex for me and I honestly feel different in a good way. Mm -hmm. I finally feel at peace with a clear mind and my body feels rejuvenated. What oh. are your thoughts on or beliefs on celibacy and waiting till marriage to have sex? <laughs> or have you ever tried practicing abstinence from sex and how did it make you feel? <laughs> so I'm going to be very, very honest. I'm gonna Me be, too. Like, I'm, I'm so glad this came up. I'm going to be very honest. I I have tried um, abstinence, or not abstinence, because I've had sex before. That's, that's not- No, it. celibacy. It's celibacy. Mm -hmm. I've tried celibacy um, several times throughout my, my life. Well, celibacy is when you're trying to wait until marriage. Abstinence- Right? No, 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 no. Abstinence is for people who um, haven't had sex. Okay. And celibacy is for people who have. Okay. Yeah. So there's like a. This is the definition, the state of abstaining from marriage and sexual relations. Okay. Sure. Abstaining the until practice, the marriage. Of not having sex. It's just, That's celibacy? Yeah. So sometimes they don't even look at it as like a religion thing. It's more so like you're taking a break of abstaining from sex for a certain period of oh, time. Oh, just for a certain period of time. Okay. So oh, okay. So confusion in conversations around the word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Well, anyways, I've tried it mm -hmm. a couple of times, but I realized I wasn't good at it because I didn't have appropriate boundaries. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't have appropriate boundaries um, with myself, I would allow guys to kind of pressure me or tempt me. And then I just fall into it. Yep. I, I allow I them to fall into me. I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done the same. Um, I actually have a lot of shame that is same. around that because same. I was supposed to same. wait until marriage. Same. And I had a purity ring and everything. Yes, I had a purity necklace and I gave it away. Same. And I, there was a, a lot of shame surrounded around that because I think like a lot of times I've blamed myself like this is the reason why Same. I've had such a difficult time with sexual like sexual experiences in my relationships because I didn't keep my promise to God Same. and I felt like God was like punishing me oh, wow. for not for not keeping my promise that's how I felt too um 
I think that when I did practice it and I stayed away from having sex, I, I felt very powerful. Like I felt like I was taking, taking on my power and I was, um, not getting wrapped up because I know that I'm super emotional and mm -hmm. I don't view sex as just sex. Like sex to me is a very like spiritual, like highest form of connecting type mm -hmm. of experience. And so a lot of times I would have sex because I wanted this higher connection with this guy. Mm -hmm. And I literally would only do, I, I would do that in hopes of that connecting us deeper. Right. And not because the connection was already there. Right. So, yeah, I've tried it. Uh, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> Not but for me either. It was it was a positive thing for me. I wish that I had, like you said, the boundaries, and I was equipped with the tools in order to carry it out. I am literally just now, and when I say I mean just now, mm -hmm. learning this for myself because I know that I would typically jump in way too fast. Yeah, and it was just with this. Well, the I guess the one that I'm currently, uh, someone that I'm dating right now mm -hmm. is uh, we waited for until four months. Mm -hmm. And I've never done that before. Yeah. Never done that before. Um, and it's, it's an experience. Powerful. It's a very powerful thing. I didn't realize like how important that was because yeah. I know I kept saying that I valued that and I wanted that. But and so because I valued that, he valued and I've never I've also never had someone who also took on the value themselves yes. just because I said you I valued, valued it. Because guys would be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah. And then when it came down to it, they tempt. Yeah. Because they don't care. They don't care. But this is the first guy that's, but, and this is how I know now what character traits to look yes. for. Um, but yeah, and, and it's elevated our relationship to an extent. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, anyway, I'm just proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> look, I'm just proud of myself. That's something that I also did different with Marcus. Like we waited yeah. and we didn't have sex for like quite a while into us connecting with one another. And it's I, important. It's so important it's so because important. it really deepens your bond I on agree. a different level. Like it makes you really be like, oh my gosh, like I really have like an emotional connection with this person. And then the sex is just an additive to that. It's, yeah. it's not the source yeah. of your connection with the person. And I think the sex too early sometimes makes you fall into the thing of like, oh, this is how we connect. Yeah. And then you ain't got nothing else to fall back on because y'all just yeah. having sex. So she mentioned something about all of her relationships only lasting four months. That's actually pretty typical. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed like when you're dating someone, you don't know them in the beginning. You're getting to know them and you don't completely get to know them until about the three to four month mark. Yep. And that's, that's when it's either this is going to last or this isn't. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it just sounds like she's met some people that just aren't compatible with her and it's just not lasting period. yeah so sis sis <laughs> what i would do if you do get to a point of uh wanting to leave your abstinence or your celibate whichever word it is um then s still wait until that four month mark mm -hmm. to decide first and then if you want to elevate your relationship with sex then do it but if yeah. not you know then just keep it trucking yeah i think that um the <sighs> I think that the main thing that like where the shame comes from with sex prior to like marriage mm -hmm. or you feel like you didn't abstain long enough. I think it really comes from the lack of the connection. I agree. And I think that when you know that you and this person had like a positive connection and like there it wasn't negativity in the relationship, it lets that shame kind of like go because then it feels like something that was worth it yeah but if you're just like having sex with someone you're not completely connected with or as connected as you should be it mm -hmm. feels icky yeah so it i think that off. you i think that you really have to like kind of sit with yourself to figure out what you personally want because there are some like if you want to abstain from sex for a certain amount of time or if you're trying to abstain until marriage yeah like and it, that is just your value system of what you feel like is necessary for you and i think that's a personal journey and that's tough but yeah. there are, i mean there are definitely some men out there who also value that and who respect that for mm -hmm. sure yeah who will definitely respect it's that. a it's a tougher path it's yeah. a tougher journey but if you feel like that's the way that you're going to find your deepest connection and the person it. you're going to be drawn to do then it by do any means do yeah. it but i'm all here for uh celibacy yeah me too i'm all here for celibacy i personally can't do it but i am all i here wish for i could have <laughs> i opened up a can of worms and then after that it was all down here for me, so. <laughs> oops sorry oops my yeah. bad so yeah okay. i think that's it for our 
our listener submissions. They were really good. So you all, please, please, please make sure that you are submitting because we love answering and hearing what you all have to say. Um, But let's move forward to some fill of the weeks. Do you have any feels for the week? Anything that you've been enjoying recently? Um, I haven't really been doing much. Um, I've just been, I've been reading that damn book. Yeah. Uh, Court of Mist and Fury Mm -hmm. is getting so good. I love that. I'm I'm, almost, I'm just about halfway there now. So like, it's good. You're making your way, trucking along. It's getting good. I feel like I'll be done with it definitely by the end of the month. Okay. Um, just with all the stuff happening, I feel like it's going to slow me down in my reading, but it's good. Yeah. It's good. I've been feeling, um, I have binged a show. Well, not binge binge because I actually watched it over the course of a few days, but Night Agent on Netflix is, it good? is so good. Is it good? It was good. But what I realized that I don't know what's going on. And I think TikTok is making my brain mush. I don't have the attention span mm-hmm. for anything. I'm like that too, because even when watching it, like I zoned out, I zoned and out you have to and rewind. I have to scroll on my phone for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's my phone. Um, it's my phone. It is. It's the phone. But that's, but I've always enjoyed TV shows like that, that actually have a storyline mm-hmm. to it. And I think that that's part of what uh, makes me feel connected to reality TV is the, like, you don't have to pay attention to it. Um, but yeah, t- reality TV is just about the only thing that my attention span can handle because yeah. like, I don't really have to pay attention to it. Yep. Yeah. It's, and then I'll just be scrolling on my phone. It's oh easier, my God. but it's, it's so more bad. entertaining to watch like stuff that actually has like a real storyline to is, it. It is. Cause once you're in it, you're in it. Yeah. So I watched that Marcus and I really enjoyed that on Netflix. So if you all have not seen have Night Agent. That. Because I keep seeing it. I'm like, oh, I want to try it. I also watched Praise This, which is the oh, movie, is that with that movie with Chloe <laughs> and Drew Was it good? And Quavo. It looks so corny. It is, but I, I'm not going to lie. I like those kind of movies. Like, um, I enjoy sometimes the little corny. It really gave Pitch Perfect with Black people. Oh! Kind of. Because what the storyline basically is, is... Uh, Chloe Bailey's character, she uh, gets sent to live in Atlanta because her, because she was wilding out in LA and her dad was like, you going to live, almost like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I was just about to say. You going to live with your auntie and uncle. So <laughs> he sends, sends her there and she's like rebel girl, like super like, I don't give a F, I'm gonna do whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she goes to live there with her aunt and uncle and she has a cousin that's super like in the church, church girl. And she ends up, joining their praise team choir Mm -hmm. and she's like the standout singer Mm -hmm. and so it's it's about kind of like her transformation in her experience of moving to Atlanta and joining this this praise team Mm -hmm. um so yeah it was entertaining I liked it uh it wasn't like anything groundbreaking so don't watch it and be like this wasn't (laughs) it's not like that but it's just like a little quick little entertaining movie that you will watch like one time and never again (laughs) okay yeah so I enjoyed that. I've still been listening to Chloe's album. I still gotta um, listen to it. I keep forgetting. I'm listening to it. I'm sitting on it. I'm realizing that I don't like the entire thing, mm-hmm. but I do like there's like a middle chunk to yeah. the album that I can like listen to straight through. So Okay. So yeah. That's all right. really all that I've been feeling. I'm trying to think. Yeah, that's really it. I've been playing a lot of video games. Really? Yeah. With Marcus or by yourself? By myself. Because we have the Switch. Oh. Um, And so I've been playing. Yeah, I've been playing Fall Guys. I need to get a Switch. Which is a lot of fun. It is fun. So I've been playing that in Mario Kart. I would be addicted, though. I would know myself. You, <laughs> you would probably go through an addictive phase For and sure. then you'll like forget that you have it. Because sure. I feel like we we have forgotten that we have it. And mm-hmm. then I'd be like, man, he on the game. I'm about to go play Fall Guys. <laughs> and so I pick the switch up and I'll play Fall Guys and that's been fun. So yeah. Okay. That's been my vibe. I love that. All I right. think that's it. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well guys, there was this was a kind of quick one, but you know, we wanted to make sure that we Gave some attention to the listener submissions. We love doing these episodes because they're kind of fun and random and different stuff kind of comes out. So as usual, make sure that you are following us on all the platforms. On TikTok, we are Fill in the Blank Pod. On YouTube, we are Fill in the Blank Podcast. So make sure you're watching these lovely visuals. And then on Instagram, we are Fill in the Blank underscore. I am at as told by Dot Kayla and Ayana at... (laughs) Ayana.amore. 
And that's all, folks. So we will see you next time. Have a great one. And we love you. Bye. Love you. Bye.